Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new Pennywise podcast from Lee Enterprises. I'm your host, Terry Barr. All right, talking about uh, maybe kind of the stress right now, of high prices and inflation. Does it possibly have you out looking for some bargains or maybe you're even trying to make a little extra cash right now? What about the idea of a yard sale or garage sale? I'm so excited to welcome in Liz Weston. Liz writes for Nerd Wallet, and she is also a certified financial planner. Liz, thanks for being here with this great topic. No, oh, it's my pleasure, Terry. Thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. So I, I guess I want to ask you, does it feel like it's a new day when we talk about yard sales compared to what we ever used to see, you know, just stuff out? And now it feels like it, it, there's almost a trend when it comes to uh, the buying and the selling compared to even a few years ago. What are you seeing? Yeah, I think inflation has lit a fire under people. They're looking for bargains on the one hand, and they're also looking for ways to raise extra cash. And a yard sale is the combination of those two things. It's a way, if you are looking to find things for a deep discount, and if you are wanting to raise money, it's turning the clutter into your house into a little extra cash. So I think inflation is really a big deal. And of course, the lockdowns with the pandemic right. have come to an end. People are willing to get out there and have strangers come into their yard. And that's another factor that's, I think, feeding into this. Yeah. And, and it sounds like this is really becoming quite a thing to do as well. You have some great tips for those of us who may want to get out there and, and, and try to hold a yard sale or garage sale this summer. So one of the tips you mentioned is the first thing trying to determine your goals. What does that mean? What should we be thinking about? Well, if you're trying to squeeze the maximum amount of cash out of whatever you have, a yard sale is probably not the way to go because ah. people go to yard sales wanting to get bargains. You're going to have to put things on a steep discount to get them sold. If you have something that's truly valuable, maybe you want to go to a consignment store, maybe you want to use Craigslist or sell it on an online auction, uh, Facebook marketplace is another place. Even a pawn shop, there's certain things like musical instruments if you want to get more value out of them, you probably should go to a pawn shop rather than do a yard sale. That being said, if your primary goal is to declutter your house, then yeah. <laughs> you could just want to put the stuff in the car and get it to Goodwill or a similar thrift store. Okay. That's the easiest way to go about it. If you're somewhere in between, though, if you really want to declutter your house and raise a little bit of extra cash, then a yard sale could be a really good way to go. That's excellent. Okay. How about this next one? Tip two go a little bigger. What does that mean? <laughs> that means invite your neighbors, invite your friends, have more than one household. We just had in our neighborhood, a neighborhood yard sale where yeah. a bunch of houses got together. That generated a lot of foot traffic. For our particular yard sale that we had a few weeks ago, we had two other households participating. That gives you the ability to say multi-family yard sale, which generates <laughs> some excitement. But, you know, the more stuff you have to offer, the better. There are certain things that sell really well year in and year out. And if you can offer those things, that's great. But again, the more stuff you have, the more reasons there are for people to come by and check out your sale. Okay, so for, for everyone listening, if they're thinking, okay, what would be some good things to put out in the yard sale? What would you say is kind of the typical thing that always sells well, but what's really hot right now too? There are different things that typically sell well. And the, I was interviewing a woman who goes by the, the yard sale queen is her <laughs> moniker. And she basically said, think of things people use every day. So yeah. kitchen items tend to do very well. Camping, that's not something we do every day, but camping mm -hmm. items tend to be a real hot seller. Tools, always, always, always tools are, are a great way to get people to come. Baby clothes can be, kind of depends on what you have in the condition. Clothes generally aren't huge sellers, but having some available can really help. Some of the things that are hot in my area include, and I'm in Los Angeles, vinyl. And vinyl tends to be very popular everywhere. Vinyl oh, albums. Yeah. Those I would agree. Really hot. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Normally outmoded technology, you know, if you have old technology, VCRs, nobody's going to want that stuff. But for some reason... <laughs> Finals huge. Yes. And costume jewelry has become really big in the LA area. I think huh. a lot of people are reselling this. So that tends to be something that's in high demand as well. Okay. Boy, put a couple of those items out you just mentioned, and you could have probably a really good sale. How did yours <laughs> go personally? 
finally, I had one that was super successful, at least for us. So we were very happy with it. And when I said, you know, have other households participate, that also helped a lot to have extra hands, extra people around to deal with the customers and to keep an eye on things. Because unfortunately, there are people who will steal from yard sales and you don't want that to happen. But uh, we actually cleared, we think, no, we know we cleared at least 600 bucks and we think we cleared more. We just didn't do a very good accounting of how much change we brought in. And that's another important thing. You want to have lots and lots of change. But we were very happy with it. And more than anything else, we had a lot of fun. We oh, talked to a great. lot of neighbors. We knew, we met some new neighbors as a part of it. And just, you know, the interaction with each other and with the people that came was a lot of fun. Let me ask you too, though, knowing you're doing this uh, together, how did you keep everybody's items separated so you knew who was actually supposed to get the money? Well, the most important thing I think that we did differently this time is that we priced everything before we put anything out on the driveway and in the yard. Ah. That is super important because there are a lot of people who just won't ask. So if you don't have a price on something, you're losing sales. There are people whose first language is not English or who might be shy about asking. So pricing is important. I just ordered from Amazon a bunch of stickers in different colors. So we each had a different color. If somebody came up to me with something that had a blue sticker on it, I knew, oh, that's Cynthia stuff. You can go deal with Cynthia. <laughs> and, you know, my daughter had one color. There was another family that was participating. They had the, the fourth color, essentially. Yeah. So it was very clear whose stuff was, was what. Oh, that's clever. Clever and a good way to make sure you get the money you deserve after yes. all that. <laughs> wow. Congratulations on a great sale. Oh, my god! It goodness. really was fun. And I read somewhere, I think it was in the New York Times, it said a good sale is somewhere between $500 and $1,000. But ah. I've had sales that barely cleared 100 bucks. So this time, it, were, it was very much worth the effort. I'm so happy to hear it. Will you do it again? Yes, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Not for a while, because yeah. again, it's a lot of work, but yeah. we definitely will do it. Okay, excellent. Finally, you have this great tip, uh, number three, uh, and this is probably one of those harder parts as well, but you have to do it. Get the word out. Yes. How do you do this and where do you do this, Liz? You need to go old school and new school. So <laughs> new school means going to your favorite search engine and just putting in the phrase yard sales near me and see which sites pop up. And there are a bunch of related sites, garage sale and yard sale sites that are owned by the same company. You can list for free um, on all of those. And then you can pay like 30 bucks to promote your sale. We didn't do that at this time. I think I might do it next time. I've heard from other people who had really good results with doing that. Also, there's lots of free places. There's Facebook, there's Craigslist. Yeah. Um, you might have a next door. If you're on next door or a similar community site, you can post the word there. And then old school is putting up signs and make sure they are bright and make sure they are simple. People driving by are not going to be able to read a bunch of words. So oh. basically the address and the time and the date of the sale, make sure those are on there. Not just an arrow pointing somewhere, <laughs> but an actual address so people can put it in their phone and find you. Perfect. And I've seen both of those, the arrow, and you're like, where does the arrow go? And the other one where there's so much information but you can't really stop to read it all. So, oh, that's such great advice. Just clear, concise, so you can get the people to come to you. Yes, exactly. And then be a responsible neighbor and take those signs down oh. afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good reminder, my yes. goodness. What would you say uh, with all of this, people who either wanna go shop and get some bargains or for the rest of us that actually would like to try to hold a decent yard sale, what's the bottom line to make sure we get it right? Make sure that your pricing is realistic. That's the place where I see people really go wrong. Either they don't have prices on their stuff or they're pricing things too high and expecting people to negotiate or they're pricing things ridiculously high and not realizing that people go to yard sales for bargains. So. I would say somewhere around 25% of the retail price is the most that you should go. I've seen a lot of places saying 10 to 20% if you're not sure. Online, you can find all sorts of lists of suggested prices for things. And that can give you a more realistic idea of what people are, expect are expecting to spend. Go around your neighborhood to some other yard sales just to see what people are charging. That can give you an idea as well. 
Yeah, that's a great idea. And what about, you know, making it more than the feel of a yard sale, you know, where you're walking in and things are kind of all over the place. Would it help if you make it um, kind of an experience for people that they have a good time while they're there? Yes, exactly. Make it a shopping experience. And that means having some of the infrastructure for doing that. That means getting <laughs> things up off the ground. Don't just dump it on a tarp. Don't just put things <laughs> in boxes. We borrowed a bunch of tables. We borrowed a couple of clothes racks. That was really important. And we also borrowed a shade structure, which was huge because it gets really hot here in Southern California. And having that helped not only us, but also our shoppers. So That's those great. kind of things make it look good from the street and people who are driving by will want to stop and check it out. That is excellent. Oh my goodness. All right. Time to have a yard sale, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we need to have fun right now and hopefully make a little extra cash for our pockets. My goodness. There you go. There you go. Liz Weston with Nerd Wallet. Liz is also a certified financial planner. So terrific to spend a little time with you today, Liz. Thank you. I always enjoy talking to you, Terry. Thanks for asking me. Oh, absolutely. And all of our Pennywise podcasts, you can, of course, find those and listen wherever you enjoy listening to your podcasts. Thanks for being here and a new episode coming your way again next week.